how's everybody doing today? This is Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest. It is Daryl Rebeck of Lexagene Holdings, Inc. How are you doing today, Daryl? Good, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I'm very excited about learning a little bit more about Lexagene. So why don't we get started with you telling us a little bit about Lexagene and how it got started. Yeah, so we started Lexagene uh, early 2016. Um, Jack and I um, are the founder and co-founders. Um, and basically, it was, it was two patents that Jack had from Livermore Labs. So this is probably, well, it is 15 to 20 years in the making. Um, it started at Livermore Labs, which is Department of Homeland Security and Defense's research arm. Um, so there it was developed for um, uh, bio threats, actually, like weaponized smallpox, anthrax. It's quite prevalent after the 9-11 um, uh, attack. So uh, Jack was the lead inventor on those products, which had about 20 million put in for Department of Defense, had another 2 million put in from National Institute of Health for a flu pandemic, uh, and then was shelved for quite some time after that when those threats became not so uh, relevant anymore. And in 2016, uh, Jack and I met with the idea of building this company and an automated sample to answer, uh, very easy to use, very cheap, very accurate uh, analyzer um, for the other markets that are that are other underserved. Um, so we met in 2016, um, raised money privately, and then went public October 2016. So today, that's you know 15 to 20 years in the making. Wow. Um, we raised 27 million Canadian um, for it since the 20. 2 million US was put into it before in the predecessor technologies. Um, 12 million of that is in the last 15 months alone. So we put sort of, I'd say, I guess if I did the conversion right, you know, over 40 million US into this product in almost 20 years. So it's been a long time um, been working on so when people sometimes see it and, and see it um, from a, a singular point of view, it's actually a very long um, process and a very long and, you know, um, uh, development period that's been years and years and years, decades in the makings and, and a lot of money. So it's, we're almost there. It's, it's a perfect timing. Very good. Now you're coming to a market with new testing system that has many applications, COVID-19 being one of them. What is this technology and how does it meet the needs we are seeing during this pandemic? Yeah, so it's really interesting and relevant. It's actually, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, it's very mind trippy, for lack of a better word, that when we started this company, we started it as a pandemic prevention tool. Um, Jack did his doctorate on influenza, um, which obviously includes pandemics and Spanish flu and such. Uh, and, and one of the things that we did with this instrument is develop this open access capability. Um, so it is PCR based, which is the gold standard. Um, if you look at some of the interviews with Bill Gates and, and others, um, even Fauci, um, PCR is the gold standard. It's very accurate. Um, it's very specific. The specificity and sensitivity is where everybody wants it to be. Uh, one of the limitations on machines was ease of use, um, which is something where most of our most of our sorry our um, competitors need a licensed technician. You need some pipetting. You need some sample prep. You need a lot of different steps before you get to the actual PCR part. Um, so the first step that we had was let's make something where you collect the sample, you input it in the machine, you hit a button, then you get an hour later, you get the results, which is something that, you know, if you're going to penetrate some markets that don't have a lab technician and you want to replace that person potentially, um, you need it to be very easy to use, such as that. The other thing, which was something we've been talking about for years, which was very hard to um, illustrate to people was this open access capability. And it was hard to give people examples of why does someone want to open access and what that means is you can load your own assay onto the machine and start testing right away. Where that's really relevant, which has become something that has garnered a lot of attention lately, is we now in this pandemic have proven that if you have a new gene that's sequenced, which we got, um, we took those CDC assays. Um, in two days, we had the results and it was running on our machine. You can run it all the time. Um, if you look at a lot of our competitors, Gene was sequenced in January. They were getting EUA clearance in March and April and May. Uh, they have 10,000 employees, so they were fully on this whole process of getting to that point. But because their cartridges are a little bit more complicated, because there's different steps to it, because a lot of them have assays that you have to embed in the cartridges, they can't get it ready till that much time. Um, so in the next pandemic, or if this evolves into a whole different pandemic or pathogen, 
uh, we are the most well suited to start testing right away. Uh, and even right now, which is very important, is if we have a placement in a hospital right now, uh, which is a huge accolade for us. The reason that's so interesting is the hospital has all our competitive, um, our competitors' machines. Wow, that's impressive. Now, everybody says they have the cure. Everybody says they've got the vaccine. Why should investors pay attention to Lexagene in a market where so many companies claim to have the answer? What sets Lexagene apart? That's a good question. Um, you know, in general, in, in diagnostics, I think one of the big things is there's a lot of people who say they can do what they do. Um, and, and especially on the small cap side, and if we're going to compare to small caps, it's, it's a very easy one for us to do. Because we're very transparent. Uh, we see how the instrument works online. Uh, we have a video on that. So it's not something where it's like, I wonder how that thing's doing what it's doing. We actually are transparent about that, which was a, a, a hard decision to make at some point because you don't want to give away all the secrets, but there's enough in there that we're not showing that that would be hard to replicate. But um, And we talk about our data and testimonials or whatever it may be. So on the small cap side, you have a lot of companies say they can do it all. But when you go to their websites or you try to get some info, you really can't find the data points. You can't find the testimonials. You can't find the placements, et cetera. So that's on the small cap side. On the mid cap and large cap, um, depending on different technologies, they aren't working. And we've been saying this for some time, as of many others. But if you look at some of the tests that are, you know, 15 minutes, people are saying, um, you know, that's going to put you out of business. But those tests aren't accurate. They aren't working. Um, there's too many false positives. The problem with false positives and false negatives, um, more false negatives, actually, sorry, is you're sending people away saying, I, I don't see it right now. Um, you're probably okay, but just be careful. But when a doctor tells you that, you have this false sense that, okay, well, I don't have it right now. Uh, and doctors don't want that. PCR-based as well is also going to find it very early. So if you look at immunoassays um, or antibody tests, you don't develop an antibody or an antigen until day 12 or 13. So if you're looking at someone that's four days into an infection, you're not going to find that. PCR-based, our machine, you're going to find that in four days and say, okay, you have it. It's very early. We need you to be careful. You need to drink lots of fluids. You need to rest, et cetera, et cetera. So um, when it comes to where our technology works is it, it does work really well. Um, it works in an hour. It's not 15 minutes, but those don't work. Um, we could probably do it in 45 minutes if we remove sample prep. You won't get as robust of a system or as robust of an answer. But you have this system now really that to envision it from day one is, it's such a small, easy to use system that you and I can operate it. So it does open up the possibilities of anywhere. So you could see it in, and we've talked about this for years, border control, um, cruise ships, uh, obviously airports, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, anywhere that anyone can use it opens up this possibility where the industries are. So there's a lot of other competition, uh, competition sorry, um, but not a lot of people who can adapt so much to so many different industries. So, um, COVID is one part of the, the target market for us, um, and we wanted to be clear about that. When we started the company, we were really actively pursuing veterinary diagnostics and food safety because there's literally no comp competition there because people can't get their, um, their costs down enough. So the, the whole COVID uh, issue right now, which is very relevant to everyone in the world, obviously, um, is something that is a bonus, if you want to call it that, based on the fact that um, the human clinical market is very crowded. Um, it's very competitive. You have most of the multi, multi-billion dollar companies. Um, and cost and ease of use isn't as much of a benefit because you do have labs, you do have practitioners um, and lab technicians all over the place. And you do have a payback system that actually affords you to charge more for your tests. Um, vet diagnostics, not so much. Food safety, absolutely not. It's very cost conscious. So um, to come in in these industries, uh, food safety and vet diagnostics and water quality, for example, alone are almost 20 billion. Human clinicals, 22. So one of the things we've always said is we're not pursuing them all because people say you have to focus, but we have the applicable nature to them all, which is very rare for a diagnostics company. Wow. Now, where is the technology currently being used and what plans of expansion can you talk to us about? So right now we're using it in a hospital in Mass, um, which is a huge step for us in the sense that we are now showing people who have questioned for a while, um, you know, can you test for COVID? That's all people really care about these days. And I totally understand that. Um, you know, can you test for COVID? Can you test for COVID? Why aren't you testing for COVID? So that hospital placement was, it was a huge deal for us. Um, this is something that, you know, we decided again, 
it's not our main industry we're going after, but because you can get EUA clearance and because you can get your machine cleared by the FDA because they're fast tracking everything, you'd be foolish not to go that way. And that industry and that division or that um, aspect, human clinical side, if that does take off, obviously that can make your company, but we're still clinical otherwise. Um, where we again have the added benefit is human clinical, if it subsides a little bit or testing subsides, whatever it may be, these other industries are still you know, in huge demand of our technology. So. Um, it has been placed in a veterinary clinic. Uh, they had four operating rooms. Um, it was right in the middle of them. Again, they'll take a sample. They walk over to the machine. They hit a button. They come back an hour later and like go to the dog and they know exactly what's wrong with that pet. Um, so that is online. We have a testimonial video, uh, which is very positive in terms of what that did to their business. So we really rounded out the whole product nature of, listen, we can apply to all these very, very well. Um, and it really opens up the possibility. So when we're commercial in October, um, we will have two salespeople in vet, we'll have two salespeople in food, we'll have two people in clinical, which was always the plan. Um, that said, which is very interesting and exciting right now, our plan for human clinical was much later, but that's now being fast-tracked, which for investors is a, is a huge bonus. Wow. Now, one of the things that in our community we really look into is share structure. Can you break down the company share structure and maybe how much is being held by insiders? I think there's four point warrants that are going to expire here shortly. Um, and a lot of those warrants are much, much higher. So they, they're definitely not affecting the share structure. So we've, we've always tried to, you know, my previous companies, if you look online, uh, we sold one and we sold part of the other one. Um, but we're always very cognizant of share structure. something that we've done, you know, very, very, Diligently over the year, the first company we had, you know, four years in, we had 60 million out. We sold it for 379 a share, and we understand if you have 200 million out, that's a dollar sale. So same with Lexigen, we do a lot of different raises at different times, and smaller raises, even though we can do larger ones, because we're always trying to protect that share structure for people. So we'd like to keep it under 100. I think once you get, you know, a balloon share structure, it just really changes the math and it changes the advantages for shareholders to capitalize some of that value. Um, so we run it really tight in the sense that, you know, we run it almost low all the time, then we raise money, et cetera, et cetera, based on the fact that we try to keep that in a level that investors say, okay, um, if I do the math, this is actually a very successful venture for us. Um, so the share structure, again, is around 100 fully diluted. Uh, this is four years in, which has been, um, you know, very, very positive in terms of development on that part. Uh, insiders own... I believe around 13 or 14 percent right now. Jack and I are the largest holders. Um, we were 10 percent holders. I think we're down to six or whatever it may be now. But um, you know, so good shareholder ownership. Um, in that ownership, it's been really. Uh, when Jack came to me in October 2016, my career previously was a senior VP at Canaccord for 15 years, oh, wow. uh, and then I left and sold one company, and then built a company up to 350 million dollar market cap NYSE company. Um, so we had a really good following and a, and a good group of people that worked with probably for, at that time, 17 or so years. Um, so those people came over to Lexagen and they've been really strong supporters. So a lot of that share structure are the same people that have been there since day one. So if you see how we trade, um, it trades really well. It, it trades in a great fashion. Um, it trades decent volume, but not a huge amount based on the fact that we have a really core group of shareholders. So we always kind of say in that 100 million, we could probably put you know, 75% of it in a room right now if we wanted to. So wow. um, it, it's well held, it's well followed. Um, and it's something where um, it's not going to be one of these companies where there's shares all over the place. And every time you get some movement, you just get all this interference with whatever it may be. Very good. What can you tell us about the coming year? What's on the horizon for Lexigene in 2020? Yeah, so the coming year is really exciting. And, and this is something where, you know, every small cap investor and every person running a startup, uh, the biggest momentum or the biggest accolade you're looking for or event is your commercialization. When you're going into sales, when you start selling. So we're four years in the making on Lexington alone. Again, the product's 15 plus in the making. And it's at the point now where we'll be commercial in Q3. We're really transitioning from that pure R&D company into a company that's going to sell into these markets. And if you look at what everybody wants, obviously that's what you want. Let's get into the sales, let's start getting going, let's get into cash flow positive. As then also open up things like a NASDAQ listing, which we've been talking about, um, to get full penetration for all investors, because again, the dualist is, is sometimes a hindrance. I think as an investor, you're looking at 
you know, a dual listed diagnostics company that has a very small market cap compared to its peers because of a more unknown position. Um, it's not on the NASDAQ. It's something that's been, you know, really quiet R and D to date and now going into sales. So I think as an investor, you know, what do you want to look for? You always want to look for something before everybody else finds out about it. And I think you're looking at something that in the next couple months, more and more, people are starting to hear about it um, when you get into sales you're going to have an influx of people who are talking about it investing in it etc um, again a nasdaq listing potentially in the future that is the next step if you do it properly um, and all that sort of thing so we just got listed in forbes um, for the second time actually a couple weeks ago we had an article written on it so um, it's starting to get to that point of SU. okay if that checks all the box it's got good share structure it's got very strong management i urge you to look at management there's oh, hundreds of billions of market cap experience and hundreds of years of experience and multiple multiple products launched um, I'd say probably in the realm of about 50 so we have the experience on the small cap side on the startup side but also on the major side as well which is very important so if you look at all these factors and then you go okay and it's relatively unknown but that should change soon that to me as an investor is something you look at and go that's that checks all my boxes where um, if everyone knew about it and we we're trading at a market cap which is more um, reflective of what we're doing, then it you, you, you have to dig a lot deeper. You'd still find that there's a lot of value here. But I think there's immense value right now in the fact that, you know, we are going to be a real competitor in this landscape and no one really knows about us. Um, we have a very, very low cost per test. We're talking around $10. Um, we can make money in all these industries and a lot of it because our cost per test is so low. And as far as we know, it's the lowest in the industry. So um, we will be cash flow positive way faster than all these other companies that would in short order. So if you look at a comparison of revenues, but more importantly, cash flow positive, diagnostics company growing, et cetera, um, and you're looking at a market cap now of, uh, so you do 100, I mean, you're looking at a market cap of around, you know, 45 million US, um, that starts to get really appealing to me. Now, let's say you're an investor or you're a shareholder or your company that wants to do a joint venture. How does somebody get in contact with Lexagene? The website's very informative. There's a how it works. There's testimonials. There's videos. Um, our, all the articles are on there. Um, so there's a lot on there that, you know, is third party as well. Um, Forbes, obviously, you can't pay for. It's not one of these paid for marketing programs. If they write you up, um, you know, they're writing you up because they like what you're doing and they agree with what you're doing and they vetted what you're doing. Well, you know what? We're really excited to learn more about the story. I know that our entire community is going to be watching very, very carefully and very, very closely. Continue all the hard work and effort and okay. the fantastic work you're doing, especially in this pandemic. Congratulations on all your success so far. And we're going to be watching very closely to see the story unfold and see this company get to revenue and become sure. profitable. So very excited to see that. We love to find undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed companies before they explode. So thank you for sharing your story. And we wish you all the best of luck in your future. Sure. Oh, thank you so much. And same to you guys. And anytime, just reach out. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. This is Daryl Rebeck from Lexagene Holdings, Inc. Put on your watches. Put on your radar. We think it has a chance to do very, very well. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have yourselves a great day.